Today's lesson is going to be found in your science folder, and I would like you to take this paper out of your science folder, and we're going to read through it together. And what this paper is all about is um, what the salmon homecoming is, and what a watershed is, and what Native Americans and non-Native Americans and the salmon all have in common in relation to the watershed, and then ultimately how we can protect our watershed or keep it healthy. So what I'd like you to do is make sure your paper's out, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in so that you'll be able to read the words much better and follow along with me. Okay, so we're going to start with the title. What is Salmon Homecoming? Salmon Homecoming is an annual event on the Seattle waterfront that celebrates the return of the salmon from the ocean to spawn, Native American traditions, and watershed health. So a reminder, the spawning is what happens when the salmon come back from the ocean and they swim up the rivers and the creeks to lay their eggs and fertilize their eggs, just like what we saw on our field trip in the fall. The Native American traditions are many of those things that we learned about last week, those celebrations and their understanding of the earth and the watershed and the salmon and how we are called to take care of them. And then the watershed health is really about how healthy the water in a particular area is. And that water includes the water from the sound into the rivers and streams and even the lakes in our area. And what we want to do is we want to pay close attention to the watershed health because it impacts not only us, but all the wildlife, plants and animals around us. So it's really important when we talk about the salmon homecoming to recognize that it's about the spawning of the salmon. It's about celebrating with those Native American traditions. And really it's about maintaining or celebrating the watershed health, how healthy our environment is. So that brings us to the next question. What is a watershed? because we've heard that word a few times now. A watershed is an area of land over and through which water flows to the lowest point, a stream, river, wetland, or lake. A watershed is also a community of people, plants, and animals that rely on the watershed to sustain their life. Your home and school are each part of a local watershed. What you do in these places directly impacts your immediate environment. Each of these local watersheds is part of a regional watershed, Puget Sound, which is in turn a part of the Pacific Ocean watershed. In other words, the ripple effects of your behavior impact first your neighborhood, then the greater Puget Sound watershed, and then even to the greater watershed of the Pacific Ocean. So that means it's like when you throw a rock into a, into a lake. The, it hits and then it makes a ripple, a bigger ripple, and a bigger ripple. So it means whatever we're doing in our little spot in West Seattle is going to impact not just us, but the Puget Sound and even the Pacific Ocean, which is kind of a big deal. So having that understanding is really important. So now we want to talk about the next big question, which is, what do Native Americans, non-Native Americans, and salmon all have in common? They are all part of the watersheds of the Northwest. It is important to all of them that the watersheds stay healthy. For over 1,000 years, salmon have been an important part of the culture of Northwest Native Americans. Salmons are also very important to non-Native people in the Northwest. They know that the health of the Northwest salmon tells us a lot about the health of people and other living things in our watershed. So the salmon is known as an indicator species. And to indicate means to show or to demonstrate. So the salmon kind of shows us how our watershed is doing because the salmon is part of the food chain at the lowest level when they're little tiny fry like we're going to release on uh, that we release into the stream and all the way up to when they are spawners so they are a big part 
of the food chain. So they indicate or tell us how well is our watershed doing, both out in the ocean and in our rivers and streams. So they're really, really important to look at. They help us know how can we keep our watershed healthy? Because remember the watershed health is what sustains us as people and as plants and as animals. So if our water shed is healthy, that means we have clean water to drink and use. If our watershed is healthy, it means our plants are growing and doing well. And if our plants and our water are doing well, then all the animals in the watershed community are also doing well. Not just humans, but all of them. And we kind of all work together. So it's really important that we take care of the health of our watershed. So that brings us to the next big question. How can I protect my watersheds? So that means what can we do? Because, you know, we can't run everything or control it all, but there are things that we can do to help the watershed. We can conserve water. That means don't waste it. So that doesn't mean you don't drink the water you need or use the water that you need, but it means you don't leave the faucet running when you're not using it. You don't you don't leave the faucet running when you're brushing your teeth. You don't take 10 minute showers. There's ways to conserve or use less water. So that helps the watershed. This one's another big one. Don't let hazardous waste go down the sink or storm drains. That means don't let bad chemicals, chemicals that aren't safe for, for the animals in the water, don't let them go down the sink, don't pour them in the sink, and don't pour them in the storm drains. So, for example, if you like to wash your car, you want to make sure you're using soaps and cleaners that are healthy for the environment. You will, and most labels will tell you if they are, because that water that runs off from washing your car at your house goes into the storm drains, which gets, which gets back into our um, well waters. Use alternatives to hazardous waste whenever possible. That means find cleaners and chemicals and things that are healthy for the environment or that won't hurt it. So that's really important. And around Seattle, it's very easy to find those kinds of cleaners. We are really good in our state about producing and importing those kinds of things. The next one is don't litter, vandalize, or create graffiti. That means don't throw garbage on the ground. Because if it ends up on the ground, it could end up in the water, which could hurt animals or make the water, water dirty. Vandalize means to destroy so that things end up in the groundwater, like painting things with extra paint and stuff, extra graffiti. And then reduce the amount of waste I produce. That means try to limit your garbage. So... If you can recycle, recycle, recycle as you can. Um, when you go to the grocery store, you take your bags with you instead of getting more plastic bags. So reduce the amount of garbage you produce. Reuse products or packaging whenever possible. Now I've seen your lunch boxes and I know you guys are really good at this one. So you often use containers that are washed out and reused. You Instead of Packing things like using plastic bags, you use reusable packaging, reusable containers, all kinds of wonderful things. And recycle everything that can be recycled. So that's a really big one. Because sometimes we go, oh, I'll just throw that in the garbage. But it actually can be recycled. So rinsing out and recycling. Now that's another one I know you're really good at because we did it in the classroom all the time. Remember at snack time, we'd rinse out our containers throw them in the recycle, that makes a huge difference for the health of our watershed. And most importantly, respect the environment where I live, go to school, and play. That means, remember, the earth is our home. And what do you do with your home? That's right, you take care of it. So I hope you learned some new and interesting things today. Tune in tomorrow to see how much you remembered.